Oh, let me not video him. He's in a grumpy little mood. He's kind of grumpy today. Shoes. And I wanna slide on a slide. You wanna slide on a slide? Uh-huh. What? Uh-huh. Where that come from? Two. Like, I don't wanna choose between between my chill time and sleep. And clearly, we are that family. Good morning. Today is July 26th. And we are getting ready to go to the storage room to um, see what's in there, see if I need to get anything out, probably don't. But uh, my husband, he is getting ready to go back on base, so he needs to get his uniforms out, and um, or at least look at them and see if he needs to get some new uniforms and all that different kind of stuff. What about me? So, what about you? Say hey. You're not gonna speak? Oh, let me not video him. He's in a grumpy little mood. He's kind of grumpy today. I don't know. You know, kids with their moods, they're just trying to filter it all. And so I'm trying to work with him and help him filter these yeah. feelings and these emotions and help him develop to the best possible person that he can be. And so, what's going on, man? I'm mad. Why are you mad? Oh, well, when we get back to the house, you can play with your toys and you can watch Marsha and Bear. But right now, we're about to get ready to go to the storage room, okay? I don't like going to the storage room. You don't like going to the storage room? No. Well, I don't like going either, but we have to go because we have some of our stuff in the storage room, okay? Uh, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> go ahead and buckle in, Charles. So that's what we're gonna get ready to go do. And we'll check back in with y'all when we get there. Bye. Grab my head and throw my head back. You saw that? No. I think it was a uh, yeah. It was just this rope probably. I know need to was. sweep in here doing too. that for your entertainment. <laughs> for your entertainment needs. Oh, look at that stuff. I don't know why this thing was fail. What's I wanna up? Hold it. You wanna hold it? Can you just hold it with me? I wanna hold it. Come on, hold it. Come why? on. Why? 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 Because I like the whole thing. Boy, look at that brand new washing dryer. No. So, we are currently at the, um, where are we? Storage room. We really don't need to get nothing out. I did kind of want to look through see if I needed something, but I don't even feel like looking through all this stuff. And, I, and I'm happy. You're happy now? Uh-huh. So, your happy face. Ooh, I love that happy face. Ooh. Let me hold it. Okay, got the happy face out. Today is a good day. Today is a good day. I got the happy face out. I don't even know. What? Woo! Oh. What's this? <laughs> this is a dirty place. I could take this to school. My red shoe! That is not your red shoe! Yeah, that's definitely not yours, son. Your foot ain't never been that big. I got that on stuff! Right we need a little spot to put all this stuff in. You might as well get us a little... Get us a little... Hey, yo! Who wants to see my trick? What trick? He said who want to see his trick. So we going through Good stuff and we feet. found some DVDs. Please turn in your red box Let's movies. Hey, Are you hey. on, on them? I'm standing right here. You know, I you Mommy! What? Oh my goodness. I'm at the brand brand new one. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Yeah, I'm at the brand new one there. That thing. Oh. <laughs> look. That is unserviceable. Um, mm. I'm going just throw that away right now. I just like that that What? Two. Huh? Like that. What frisbee? Those Pass frisbee. it. Let me see it. Pick it up. Thank you. Ah, right. see these frisbees. I need to go through these claws. Ooh, let me go through these claws. I'll be right back. This is a mess. 
Charles, pass me a uh, garbage bag. All right, so we're wrapping things up. It's so hot out here, guys. I'm, I've been sneezing too, child. I think it's all this dust. Been sneezing like crazy. So I didn't find the wax warmer that I was looking for. So I guess I have to um just go get another one if I really want one. Stop. Don't do that. You're not driving. Yes, I do. I'm not no, you're not. You think you're such a big boy that you could drive? Uh -huh. You can't even push the pedals. I see. Mm -hmm, I see. See, so I let it push the pedals. You too little to push the pedals? Uh-huh. Come on, let me close the door so Bye -bye. we can get ready to go. You're ready? You're not in your seat. Come out for just a second. Let me do something in the back. Oh, give me some water. Okay. Oh, come out. There you go. Let's both share. Let's both share. I can dig it. Huh? I can dig it. I found a whole bunch of these, like three. I'm going to take them to school, see if they work. Because I got, I got like three Mom. in my room. Let me have some. Okay. Thank you. Now it's my person. Damn, I got this scale, no, but the no batteries toys. are gone dead, so I need to get some new batteries. Now give it to me. It's my turn now. I'm done. I don't want any more. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so anyway, I need to sit down for a minute. I am so hot, and we are about to go anyway. The um. The door and everything is still up, but we only have like stuff. I'm gonna drive. We only have stuff that we're actually keeping or throwing away, and then the other stuff just staying in the um in the storage unit. And I actually found some work clothes that I had been looking for and some work out clothes. No, don't don't do that. Why? Because we're drinking it. So, I actually found some work clothes and some workout clothes I had been looking for. So, I'm glad I found it. And I came this close to buying a black cardigan. And then when I went in here, I found a brand new, I guess it wasn't brand new, but a fairly new black cardigan that I had bought from Express last year. And when we moved down here, I guess I didn't get it out because it wasn't like um, cool enough to just be wearing cardigans. But... Now that I'm uh in the building with full, you know, like 
complete air because our air wasn't working at one point in time and so now that we're in a building with air i feel like okay let me get my cardigan out teachers love cardigans so you know I think I could use it. And then I just found like some other stuff, like um, just like teacher clothes that I'm gonna need and that I could use. And we wear uh uniforms on Mondays and Tuesdays. Come here, Charles, so they can see you. They wear we wear uniforms on Mondays and Tuesdays, and Charles wears uniforms every day to school. Except for Friday is like a free day. But he got his uniforms when we went shopping in Louisiana. So he got all his uniform pants and all his shoes. And I want to slide on a slide. You want to slide on the slide? Uh-huh. What? Uh-huh. Where that come from? That comes from at the dollar store. At the what? At the supermarket. At the supermarket? Uh-huh. And we went shopping. And I was, and I'm going to go... To the yeah, okay, yeah. It was a it was a playground at the stop. No, don't put that out. Uh uh, no sir. Get that out of your mouth. It was a playground at the um at the uh mall, at the outlet mall. And so he did want to uh, play on the playground. And I was like, no, I gotta finish shopping. Because it's just like when I got something on my mind that I need to get, I just wanna get it. I just I just need to like go ahead and do what I'm doing. And that's one reason why I don't <laughs> like shopping with him or with kids at all or and where my new haircut? because you know where my new haircut yeah though? you need to brush your hair though why but yes he has no hair now he got a really low haircut <coughs> really really do get out okay so i am at home and it is like four o'clock and um i'm waiting on my clothes to dry um so i can have something to wear to my grandmother's house because we are having like family um get together this evening and then um my son is asleep so i got a little chill time and like they always told me i mean like they people always say go to sleep when your children sleep don't you stay up if your children are sleeping you go to sleep but i can't go to sleep because one i don't like taking naps during the day because it keeps me up at night and then i feel i usually feel groggy after my naps two like i don't want to choose between between my chill time and sleeping like i always choose just to chill so um, and then I just had like some other stuff like I need to finish getting ready. I need to finish doing my makeup Luckily, I have my hair braided so I don't have to do my hair Which is a plus and then I needed to finish washing the clothes still drying though And I still got to iron my clothes when I get out the dryer and um, Then I can put them on so but I got a little time and before before it's actually time to like um, so I'm just chilling like with this big old shirt on like comfy clothes like I'm not doing nothing major like you know Netflix is on but I'm not even watching Netflix I was on the computer and I need to get back on it and finish doing some stuff but I also need to clean up because it's looking kind of funny up in here so I don't know. I'm just not doing much of nothing. And like when I'm not doing much of nothing, it's like a million things that I should be doing or I could be doing. And I'm like, well, do one of those million things. Then I get like overwhelmed thinking, oh my God, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. And in, in reality or I am or whatever, I am actually doing stuff because I am like uh, washing clothes. <clears throat> I did just get finished doing my makeup and so I, um, well, I'm drying clothes so I can put them on but then I'm like okay I could be doing lesson plans but I really don't feel like doing lesson plans because I mean it's just the summer and I told myself I would do like so many well I didn't even give myself a number I guess that's where I messed up it but I didn't do as many lesson plans as I thought I was gonna do so I still feel like I have work that I could be doing that I'm not doing um 
And then when I start doing it, I'm just kind of like, I get frustrated because it's something that I need that's at school or a question that I have to ask and I need to email our interventionists or email the principal. And, I, I, you know, of course, they're not going to get back to me until a few days because they're so busy during the summer. Um, we went to the school yesterday for a team leader meeting and the principal, she was just overwhelmed. We did get some really good news about our school, though, so I'm really happy about that but um just just the whole complexity of of school of being a teacher of being a principal being an administrator be, holding a role in the school being on the leadership team you know being on different committees it you know just it it, it takes so much to do what we do and I just sometimes get overwhelmed like I think about um, some of the mistakes I made and I'm human so I make mistakes you know but I think about some of the mistakes I made last year that I don't want to make this year and each summer I take it as a reflective um, time to just think about okay what did I do that I shouldn't have done or what could I do that could be better or what did I do that I would like to you know keep doing so when we went to the school for our uh, leadership meeting, I actually went down to my classroom and I looked in my classroom and I was just kind of like, okay, I want to change something. Like some stuff I really liked about my classroom, like I'm talking about as far as a setup, but when it came to being effective and efficient and just having a smooth flow of a classroom, um, I felt like I didn't have that. Like when it came to my centers. Um, I tried to make it as simple as possible where my students would rotate from center to center around the room like a big circle. And I thought that would be pretty simple. Mm, and it was for the most part. But what gets complex is when um, I have to pull out certain students for interventions or certain students for center time or certain students for the teacher led table. And. Um, they they come to me and then they go back to their group and their group is already done with their work or their or they need help with the work and the group has moved on to something else and it just it became chaotic for me to keep up so i need to find a sit you know that kind of stuff is overwhelming for me when doing lesson plans because i have to put that kind of stuff in lesson plans i have to put put what standards we're doing and how what standard is being taught at each uh, or being reinforced at each center and then my teacher lay table so all those things are like really important that goes into my lesson plans and i get overwhelmed with doing that because i'm just kind of like now i got to think about how i'm gonna do my centers who i'm gonna group with the centers and then, and then it just starts leading out to other things like okay who am i gonna group in the centers or what what are my students gonna be like this year or, you know how many students i'm gonna have this year and it just starts to becoming um just i i it becomes a lot it becomes a lot to deal with lots of lots of focus on at one time and i don't want to ever feel like it's too much like this like i really enjoy what i do i really have a passion for this and i really love teaching but it's just like the logistics of teaching just like the the minor things like the minor things that aren't really minor minor because that's a big deal getting your center rotations down pat getting your getting your routines established and i just think about how i have to reteach all my routines this year and to a new whole new group of students and constantly teach routines and last year i had a really good group i mean they caught on really fast and i had some really awesome kids and so it wasn't as frustrating as my first year in kindergarten because this will be my third however i think it all kind of boiled down to me too i did not teach how i should have taught if that makes sense um i kind of went in assuming that they would know right from wrong or assuming that they would know certain things that they did and in all honesty it's just it, it's kind of a downer having to teach that little stuff and then 
not really teaching the book not really teaching like you know the meat of kindergarten you know like really the letters really the phonics really the sounds really the rules really you know reading we don't get into reading until like um until like december they should be pretty much read on their own or at least down in that words and usually from after december when we come back after the christmas holidays it, it runs a little bit smoother you know still teaching routines but the, anyway the point i'm making is i'm sorry the point i'm making is i'm just constantly thinking about my long list of things to do and I want to get out. I don't know if I will ever get out of that point where I'm focusing on every little thing I have to do. Um, and not that I'm comparing myself to other teachers, but I just know some veteran teachers. And I don't consider myself a veteran teacher, honestly. I, this is my fifth year teaching, but I don't consider myself a veteran teacher because I did take two years off and i'm always learning like i feel like something is always changing something is always new something's always different so i'm always learning and i'm not in my groove just yet where i feel like um i got all my set routines and i know what i'm gonna do and that's what i do every year and i'm not gonna change and that's how i like it and that's how i want it i don't think i would ever just be like that because i always want to try something new i always want to try something different and so as far as me being set in something every single year no way probably not but as but me knowing okay this is what i need to do and I have the resources to do it. I want to get to that point. And I'm just still not at that point. Like, I mean, I'm just not. I'm still researching some stuff. I'm still thinking about what will work best for me and my classroom. And what is what is the most effective and efficient but simple way to do it because i don't want to go all around the world to do something i don't want to reinvent the wheel i don't want to just be going in a, a, a hamster wheel i just really want to have a routine in place that's effective and efficient also i have to think about my assistant she does a lot in the classroom so when it comes to um she does a lot in the classroom so when it comes to certain things i need to think about how it will affect her and if she'll be able to catch on if she'll be able to understand um of course we have to keep the students you know priority and so those are just little things that i've been thinking about and i'm just kind of like oh shit, it's about to get real and we have like one full legit week like next week is the last week that we're gonna be out and then we we start school august 6th the kids come back on the 8th so <sighs> then i need to finish my classroom i did set my classroom up i did do all of that but that's that's like i i know i'm let me take that back i did go to the school to start setting my classroom up i did keep a lot of stuff up from last year so i don't have to do as much but i just want to make it i, I just want to make it fun this year i want to have a really fun classroom um the year before we were um we were on the state department's radar and so a lot of things they took out like as far as we couldn't have like it was against state, a state policy to have um like anything hanging from your ceiling so like all that little stuff we had to take out and just like a lot of little stuff that you would consider like, well that i would consider fun like kids love to come to the classroom and see the stuff up so i know i can't put like stuff like that up but i did get some pom-poms and i want to put different pom-poms around the room like those um you know, like you know like those party pom-poms so i want to get some i want to get those up and just have it bursting with color and fun and i want it to be exciting and i want it to just be my my idea was a um uh learning party so like the classroom was a party every day a learning party every day i thought that was really cute so anyway let me just get back to doing what i was doing which is ain't nothing much 
<laughs> but it is it was better than doing nothing at all and i'll probably check in with y'all later and um bye for now hello welcome back okay so we are in the car headed to my grandma's house but charles is just now waking up and when he wakes up he's kind of in the mood you know he gets to kind of come to himself and you know just really get out of his sleep mode and he's in like a little mood and that's okay we're all in moods and we are learning how to um, filter our feelings and how to deal with them appropriately so anyway that's all we're doing I'm just checking in we're waiting in the car cuz my husband isn't ready you know how black people ain't never nowhere on time and clearly we are that family I'm talking about like immediate family who never shows up on time nowhere usually it's because of me but today my um husband he decides to take well he started getting ready then he stopped because he said uh our son was asleep so he wasn't gonna be getting ready while he was asleep he'll just wait till he got up to finish getting dressed so long story short when we were ready he still was not ready and then he says he has to stop by the store to get lotion because he's ashy so we are at dollar general and it's already like oh my god my clock says 620 it cannot be 620 it is 620 and it's already 620 so don't call us and ask us where we are because we just late all the time. And it, that's one thing I do want to work on when going to uh like going into this school year. I always found myself like waking up at like 5:30 and having a rush to get ready because we have to leave the house by six o'clock and um or 6:20. But getting myself ready and my son ready is just so... I don't know why it's so hard. And he wears uniforms every day. So I would have all his uniforms out. Some weeks I would do good and I would iron all his uniforms for the week. And then some weeks I wouldn't. And so like Monday and Tuesday will start off good. But then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday it's a free for all. Or like me, I wouldn't pick my clothes out at night. So I would get dressed in the... <clears throat> me getting dressed in the morning trying to find stuff to hurry up and pull out and you know all this different kind of stuff and so i really want to change that this year i really want to uh i really want to like pick my clothes out at night or even like for the week pick everything out for the week and so you know iron it and everything and so each morning we can just get up rolling because also my um aunt gave me a treadmill so another one of my goals is to get up at like 4.30 or 5 o'clock, do 30 minutes on the treadmill, then get dressed. Like take a bath and get ready and get dressed and stuff. That's my that's my plan. That's my, my hope for this year. It's just like be more mentally healthy, physically healthy, emotionally healthy, and also just, just really getting my life together. Just really getting all of this, just mind, body, and soul together because i want to make sure i have everything i need for the class that day ready i'm not having to run uh papers run copies in the morning just stuff like that just to make my life smoother and flow a little bit easier i think if i did that then i would have a, a pretty easy flowing um life you know just just everything would flow a little bit better even as far as like meal prepping and having food that i need to eat because I, I know like some mornings i would wake up and i just drink coffee and this is when i wasn't doing the intermittent fasting when i would just drink coffee and my mindset wasn't right and so like by nine or ten o'clock i was starving well we don't eat till 10 40 then i go into the cafeteria and that it i just eat junk that's in there like I get um like usually they'll have a side of fries or potato wedges. 
Hey y'all, so we um, dropped my husband off at the airport and he is headed back to California. And you know, being in the, being a military family and living um, by coastal pretty much, um, and I guess you could say it's by choice, um, but in all honesty, it's, it's, it's by choice. But how it happened was, and I was, I might sit down and do like a video about this, but um, I didn't want some of y'all to be confused. Like, why are they still in Mississippi and her husband's gone back to California? But he was deployed. And so, right before he got deployed, um, they went on all, like a lot of field ops and training ops and all different kind of stuff like that. And so he was never there. And we made the decision then to start moving back to Mississippi because I mean I wasn't working at the time and um, my son was still pretty young and so it was just a good time to like go ahead and slowly move back to Mississippi and so that's what we did then he got the, he was deployed for um from 2017 to 2018 then he came back and he did sign um he did sign re-enlisting papers, so he did re-enlist. But the only thing now is, it's like, I don't know if y'all know how the military works, but he has to finish out this contract, and then he will get uh, his new duty post, which is hopefully, you know, where we want it to be. But that's the reason why we're still here. And it is hard. Like, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, you know, it's not that hard. And we got family. It is hard being in two different states. Two completely different states. It's not even like I'm on the West Coast or he's in the South somewhere. It's like we are totally opposite and so you know but we make it work and we do have family which makes it easier it doesn't take up the fact the way that you know i'm not there with him and he's not here with us but um for the most part we are handling it very well and originally i always said wherever he's going i'm gonna go we're gonna go we're gonna stay together but things happen that you just life happens that you're just not completely in control of and i knew i didn't want to stay in california while he was deployed and it was just the perfect time just the timing of everything then because i am a school teacher i um it i was the how our contracts work well i know like in the state in mississippi what i'm familiar with we sign a contract and then your contract is from like august to may well I already, the first time when I moved to California, I did break my contract, but it was because of the military move, and they don't, it was like a hardship, it was called something, I can't remember the, the exact name of it, but they don't take your teacher license or reprimand you or anything like that, so that was really good, but at this point, it was like, I didn't want to break my contract because i had invested so much in the school year and we had given up our home like we lived on base and so while um he was deployed and everything we had given up our home and you know it was just like we didn't want to go and stay in the hotel room it was just it was it was just too much and we still have a house full of furniture and everything like in the storage room so it was just too much and especially since we're hoping in february he gets stationed where we want him to be stationed at then you know everything will work out so i just wanted to come on and end this vlog and i'll catch you all next time bye